from all the several types of cups, you will find that you'll find yourself with a lot of options and maybe you don't know what type of cup to go for. So we will do a breakdown today for the types of cups that you will find and what probably you would, you would wish to use. So uh, as a starter, I thought of, let's start with like a decoupling cup. What's a decoupling capacitor? This is a term that you may or may not have heard, but it's one of the most common capacitors. That so a decoupling capacitor. So this is this is a term that you will come you will come in terms with say every other time that we are doing design you will hear so you will hear me saying from time to time let's use a decoupling capacitor here let's find a decoupling cup for this particular IC so basically what's the function of this decoupling capacitor the decoupling capacitor has a job that is to suppress high frequency noise in power supplies in power supplies. So its function is to suppress because these high frequency, high frequency spikes, they, they, might, they would otherwise be harmful to some ICs. So we need a way to suppress them. In, in a way, the decoupling caps also do act like small local power supplies for the IC. So what do they do? They do hold some power temporarily so that they can supply the IC, say at some point, if we don't have enough supply from the main supply and this why for some other reason they are called bypass caps if you hear someone talking about a bypass cap i mean it's basically a decoupling capacitor so and the typical value for a decoupling capacitor and this is now getting to the point i said typical decoupling typical value for decoupling capacitor is usually 0 0.1 microfarads or 100 nanofarads you remember we talked about the units of measurement for capacitors when we were talking about microfarads and farads. So the unit of measurement itself is farads, but we said that caps will find being expressed as microfarads. So the typical value for decoupling capacitor is 0 0.1. I'll include that in the pointers. So you will find us using this from time to time in order to bypass some needs to the IC. This is some pr practical application of some decoupling capacitors. Well, they are capacitors, but now we are using them as decoupling. So, and we've talked about de decoupling being that ability of a cup to, to provide some power that's needed. Say when we have some shortage from the main power supply. I do have some few pointers in a way that you can easily spot a decoupling capacitor and you'll instantly know when you see a PCB or a motherboard in code that this is a decoupling capacitor. So you see, these capacitors are always placed as close as possible to an IC. And from the image, you can see like this one here is a decoupling cap very close to this IC. Same for this one here. We also have this one, this IC here. We do have two of them here very close. Again, another IC here. You see this IC also. We do have actually chain of them here and others here. This particular mem card holder here also has a decoupling capacitor just next to it. And again, you also realize that here we have two types of cups. We have a ceramic capacitor here and you have a tantalum cup here. We'll be coming to that later. So what are the pointers? The other thing is, to get good results, let us always combine. It's always advisable to combine at times. If you're using more than one, do combine two types. Maybe you can use an electrolytic cup and a ceramic cup. So why? We do this because some cups do have high parasitics, and so they will not deliver the capacitance as registered. So, and, I mean, they, they will affect the performance. So to compensate for that, we include them as two. Another, another point is that, for all these decoupling capacitors, do make sure that you keep very short and wide power traces. That's going to power because a decoupling capacitor will always be connected between power line, say like five volts and the ground, what other people will call earth or the neutral. But in this we have ground, let's talk about ground. Again, when connecting a decoupling cup to your design, 
you, you connect you connect the, the, the side of the ground, just you use a short thick trace that goes directly to a via, just a very short. And these are these are indicators here. If you zoom in with these images, you will see that we have we do have some short thick traces from each of these capacitors. And actually you can realize you, you can almost see no trace coming out of, of them, especially when they are very close to an IC. Because when you do very long traces in your PCB, so what you do, you are going to create some very big loops because you see power will move from VCC all the way to ground. And when you have those loops, again, you are creating inductance, bringing more problems to your design. Let's go to types and characteristics and applications of these particular capacitors. Now have listed the...